We are at one of the most hypocritical times in the world, a time where many self-declared Christians, those that say they believe in and live for Jesus. This is a time when they celebrate the false pagan tradition of Easter, a tradition that the Bible does not call us to celebrate, a time that is not biblically calculated, but calculated by the cycles of the moon, a time that is actually a celebration of the pagan moon goddess. And the worst part is, while they celebrate this, they actually ignore a time that the Bible actually calls us to remember. A time that is extremely significant for so many reasons. A time that actually celebrates the true Elohim of the Bible and our Savior, Yeshua the Messiah. A time we know as the Passover. It's extremely hypocritical because this is a time where the Bible expressly tells us to remember always and celebrate, while Easter is not mentioned at all except incorrectly in some versions and acts, in place of Passover. But it's celebrated by a majority of those that declare that they follow in and believe in Yeshua. So believing that we are at this time, that we are about to celebrate and remember the Passover, I think it is important that we discuss it and explain the significance of it, because this is truly a remarkable time to remember for many reasons. So let's discuss why. Let's begin. Okay. So before I begin, I know I glossed over the pagan celebration of Easter. And if you do not understand why I have said this, you may be taken back and decide that you don't want to listen any further. And that is okay. I mean, I understand. For me personally, I just don't let people speak against what I believe and give an open ear to it. But the thing is that it's not about us. Everything that we do to please and to remember our Father and our Savior, we must do it with a sound mind understanding completely why we partake in certain things. And the celebration of Easter is something that you must understand. I have made a video that explains this in depth. If you do not understand this topic, please watch this video to gain understanding before you write this information off. It is highly important to understand. Okay, now that that's out the way, I'm not going to give any more time to that pagan festival worshiping the moon goddess. Let's talk about what truly matters. Passover is an extremely important time. It accomplished multiple things. The way most people understand is that the significance of Passover is that Elohim freed the children of Israel from captivity of Egypt. And yes, that is a major event that happened during this time. But what this day signifies is much greater than freeing us from slavery. Passover is significant for two other majorly important reasons. One, it is the first time that Yahuwah, the God of Israel, declared himself to the world. And he showed there is a different, more powerful God than the pagan gods that were celebrated by the pagan world empires, which at that period in time was Egypt. And then two, it was a prophetic display of our father's ultimate plan to save his children from the ultimate bondage of sin that we are all born into. This is a truly remarkable and significant day that must be remembered so we will go over this biblically first so that we understand where it comes from. Let us go back to the book of Exodus. Before we discuss the event, let's go over a few things. The children of Israel, all the 12 tribes, the families that consisted of the 12 sons of Israel, they multiplied while being in Egypt. They grew in such great numbers that the Pharaoh of Egypt decided that they were going to enslave them before they overtook Egypt. Egypt was a second world empire after the first Babylon, the kingdom of Mesopotamia, Sumeria. Egypt was a great pagan empire that worshiped multiple gods, father god, mother god, and son of god, with many other lower gods in the hierarchy. For more understanding of this, you should watch History of Religion Part 1. Egypt was the leaders of the known world at that time, and it was believed that at that time, no one was greater than their gods. Israel had a different God that they were told of through family history that came from knowledge of their forefather, Jacob, later named Israel. And Jacob's knowledge of the Most High came from his father, Isaac, and his knowledge came from his father, Abraham. Abraham was given a covenant with the Most High. But what I was saying is that while Israel knew of their God, they did not know him and they were losing themselves under pagan Egypt, do a lot to how harshly they were being dealt with. It wasn't until Moses, 
who also was a Hebrew, under the direction and covering of the Most High, came back to Egypt to free the Hebrews. He told Pharaoh to let his people go, and Pharaoh refused. So there were multiple plagues that the Most High placed on Egypt, and Egypt tried to summon the power of their pagan gods, who was actually Lucifer, but that's another discussion. Egypt summoned their pagan gods, but their power was limited compared to the God of Moses, the Most High. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened until the Most High gave him one last warning. And this will lead us into Exodus chapter 11. And Yahuwah said to Moses, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and on Egypt. Afterward, he will let you go from here. When he lets you go, he will surely drive you out of here altogether. Speak now in the hearing of the people, and let every man ask from his neighbor and every woman from her neighbor articles of silver and articles of gold. And Yahuwah gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man, Moses, was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. Then Moses said, Thus says Yahuwah, About midnight I will go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the female servant who is behind the handmill, and all the firstborn of the beast. Then there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as was not like it before, nor shall be like it again. But against none of the children of Israel shall a dog move its tongue, against man or beast, that you may know that Yahuwah does make a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. And all these your servants shall come down to me and bow down to me, saying, Get out! and all the people who follow you. After that, I will go out. Then he went out from Pharaoh in great anger. But Yahuwah said to Moses, Pharaoh will not heed you, so that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. So Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh. And Yahuwah hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the children of Israel go out of his land. Exodus chapter 12, the Passover, instituted. Now Yahuwah spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house Take it according to the number of the persons. According to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight, and they shall take some of the blood and put it on the doorpost and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. They shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire, with unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Do not eat it raw, nor boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning, and what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it, with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand so you shall eat it in haste. It is Yahuwah's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am Yahuwah. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So this day shall be to you a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to Yahuwah throughout your generations. You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leaven from your houses. For whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. 
On the first day, that shall be a holy convocation. And on the seventh day, that shall be a holy convocation for you. No manner of work shall be done on them, but that which everyone must eat, that only may be prepared by you. So you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For on this same day, I will have brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore, you shall observe this day throughout your generations as an everlasting ordinance. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the twenty-first day of the month at evening. For seven days no leaven shall be found in your houses, since whoever eats what is leavened, that same person shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he is a stranger or a native of the land. You shall eat nothing leavened. In all your dwellings you shall eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Pick out and take lands for yourselves according to your families, and kill the Passover lamb. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. For Yahuwah will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, Yahuwah will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. And you shall observe this thing as an ordinance for you and your sons forever. It will come to pass when you come to the land which Yahuwah will give you, just as he has promised, that you shall keep this service. And it shall be when your children say to you, What do you mean by this service? That you shall say, It is the Passover sacrifice of Yahuwah, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians and delivered our households. So the people bowed their heads and worshipped. Then the children of Israel went away and did so, just as Yahuwah had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. The Tenth Plague, Death of the Firstborn And it came to pass at midnight that Yahuwah struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne, to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of livestock. So Pharaoh rose in the night, he, all his servants, and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. The Exodus Then he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise, go out from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go, serve Yahuwah as you have said. Also take your flocks and your herds, as you have said, and be gone, and bless me also. And the Egyptians urged the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, We shall all be dead. So the people took their dough before it was leavened, having their kneading bowls bound up in their clothes on their shoulders. Now the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses, and they had asked from the Egyptians articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing. And Yahuwah had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they granted them what they requested. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. Then the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Succoth, about 600,000 men on foot, besides children. A mixed multitude went up with them also, and flocks and herds, a great deal of livestock. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough, which they had brought out of Egypt, for it was not leavened because they were driven out of Egypt and could not wait, nor had they prepared provisions for themselves. Now the sojourn of the children of Israel who lived in Egypt was 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, on that very same day, it came to pass that all the armies of Yahuwah went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night of solemn observance to Yahuwah for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. This is that night of Yahuwah, a solemn observance for all the children of Israel throughout their generations. And this is the true story of the Passover, and it is completely wonderful. This slave nation of Israel showed that their one God that they served was more powerful than all the many gods that Egypt served. The power of the Most High was on display, and the rest of the world 
knew there was a difference between the one God that Israel served and the multiple gods the other nations served. The one true God was at this point now made known to the world and his power was shown to not be matched. This is why he is the most high. Nothing or no one is higher than him. And this is something that we should always remember, especially those of true Israel. But regardless whether you are Jew or Gentile, if you believe in the Messiah that was sent, if you believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, this is the day you should never neglect or forget. The world has distracted us from its true significance. False pagan traditions and worldly Christianity that's tied to man has replaced the significant event of Passover with a pagan festival celebrating the moon goddess. As I've showed in another recent video, that we're at a time where all these people are declaring that we are all worshiping the same God. But this one day, this one event right here shows that we do not, and there is an ultimate difference. Father wants this emphasized and known in these last days. Those that love him, please listen. We all must remember the Passover. Pray to our father, show him the respect and love he desires and deserves, because there will be no freedom in this world from the bondage that plagues us all without this day happening. Without this day, there will be no Israel. There will be no Yeshua, our Messiah, that was sent to take us from the ultimate bondage that we are enslaved to, the bondage of sin. So while we observe and recognize this day, we should also look at his magnificence and power and know there is none higher and he is truly worthy of our honor, our love, our respect, in our praise. Let's truly look to how deep this day really is and why, if you love Yeshua, this is the day you must remember. Now let's discuss the significance of the Passover. If we go back to Exodus chapter 12, verses three and five through seven, the verses says, speak to all the congregation of Israel saying, on the 10th of this month, Every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight, and they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. And then verses 12 and 13 of chapter 12 also says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am Yahuwah. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This is the second part of his magnificence. Not only did he show his power, but he used the power as a display of prophecy. He had Israel take a sacrificial lamb and use its blood to cover over the doorpost that made all who did this in faith be covered by the blood of the lamb and his judgment passed over them. Hallelujah. He prophetically displayed what he was doing through his son whom he sent who was a sacrificial lamb for our sins. Yeshua is our Passover. Let's go through the scriptures to understand this better. As Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, Therefore, purging out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, since you are truly unleavened. For indeed, Messiah, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. He is described in John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day, John, saw Yeshua coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of Elohim, who takes away the sin of the world. Like the Passover lamb, Yeshua was a mature, unblemished male. Now Yeshua himself began his ministry at about 30 years of age, being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph, the son of Heli. That's Luke chapter 3, verse 23. Peter explains, who committed no sin, nor was the seat found in his mouth. 
It's 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22. Like the lamb in Exodus chapter 12, verse 46, none of his bones were broken. John chapter 19, verse 36 says, For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. Not one of his bones shall be broken. Listen, Yeshua was slain for our sins. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Messiah died for our sins according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. Again, Yeshua is our Passover. Knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold, from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Messiah, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who through him believe in Elohim, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in Elohim. That's 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18-21. through 21. Because of Yeshua and his sacrifice, our Father can say, When I see his blood, I will pass over you. His blood has been shed for us so that we can cover ourselves with it and not be placed under our Father's wrath at his appointed time. And that is why Passover is so wonderful and why we should never take it for granted. This whole day leads to Yeshua. So it is honestly a smack in the face when we ignore this wonderful time and then partake in a time that has nothing to do with him in truth. So I guess the next logical question would be, how do you celebrate Passover? How do I celebrate Passover? For me, I cannot tell you that I am the perfect person to provide this guidance. Every year as we have grown, we have gotten better with the observance of this time. It is a wonderful thing to do as a family and to prepare the Passover meal according to scripture. Roasted lamb with herbs and unleavened bread. And in case you didn't really understand what unleavened bread is, all that is is any type of bread that's not used with the raising agent like yeast. There's no yeast in unleavened bread. So a great thing to do is to prepare a meal according to Exodus chapter 12, verse 8. But I do not want to place my family as the primary example. I will tell you what I was led to do from the beginning and what I make sure we do every year. If you have any more to add that your family does, please place it in the comment section. It's greatly appreciated. What my family does is we make sure we do as Yeshua has told us to do in remembrance of him. We partake in his last supper that he had with his disciples during the Passover before he was taken. And on this night coming of Passover, and even if you're late, please make sure you do this during this time. This action amongst all of us believers around the world will be a strong declaration to Father that we love him, we respect him, and honor him. Let's tell him that we believe in him and remember his son whom he sent to die for us. With your family, Partake in Yeshua's Last Supper. I don't call it communion and I don't add anything to it. I just do as the scripture says. We take wine or grape juice for children and some unleavened bread. I don't really care if it's marked kosher or not because honestly, I don't want the Rev 2 Nimes to be praying over my food. So we bless it ourselves. This is what we do. We share out a small amount of wine or grape juice and unleavened bread. They are referred to as matzahs. Then the leader of the home leads. Let us partake in the remembrance of our Savior according to his word. Then the leader of the home reads Luke chapter 22, verses 14 through 20. When the hour had come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, With fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of Elohim. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of Elohim comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup 
is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Then the leader proceeds moving on to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26 explains why we do this in remembrance of him. For I received from Yah that which I also delivered to you, that the Adun, Yeshua, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim Adonai's death till he comes. So family, we take this bread, which is a representation of our master Yeshua's body that he gave up for us and was broken for us. We eat this in remembrance of him. Let us eat the bread in remembrance. We next take this cup, which represents our master's blood that was shed for us. This represents our covenant with him, that we are redeemed through his blood and covered by his blood. Our father will pass over us. We drink this in remembrance of Yeshua. Let us drink. Now let us together pray and remember and talk to our father. And at this point, I normally play a song and we pray silently, individually. After the song, the leader ends with prayer. I've written this out and placed a link on my website to assist anyone who may need it. We do this to remember our Savior, and I encourage you to do this as well this Passover and all Passovers to come until our Father calls us home. We do this to proclaim his death until he comes. Our lives were made to serve him and honor him. Take this time to do as our Father commands. Live with a sincere heart and thanks of receiving this gift of salvation through Yeshua and remember all he did for us. Commit your life to him. Forsake the ways of this world and how they celebrate their gods and celebrate our Father in heaven the way he has asked of us. Remember the Passover and honor our Father. It is truly a wonderful day, and all of us as believers should honor Him. I pray that our collective remembrance of Him brings glory to His name, and He feels our adoration, our love, and honor. This is Passover, and because of Yeshua, our Father can say, When I see His blood, I will pass over you. Cover yourself in the blood of Yeshua and be passed over, ready to be called and redeemed. Give him all the praise and honor for he is worthy to be praised. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please don't forget to like this and share it with others. If you have not done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, I really would like to thank all those who support this ministry. You know who you are. Your contributions have been an extreme blessing to this ministry, and I'm very thankful for you. Thank you for being a blessing and your continued support to this mission. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. Happy Passover. I love you all.